Hello, I'm Nigel Church, product trainer for Cutting Edge Training, which is a division of Ransom's Jacobson Limited. Today we're looking at tractors, and my goodness, haven't they progressed since the early days of Harry Ferguson. So now the dilemma is, do you go hydrostatic drive tractor or do you go mechanical with shuttle shift tractor? So let's have a look at a typical tractor with a manual transmission and shuttle shift. We're in the cab of the tractor now. The first thing that you may notice sometimes is that we have a flat floor. This makes it nice and easy to get in and out. And that's been achieved by the fact that many of the controls are now either side of the driver's seat and not down in the center like they used to be traditionally. Secondly, we still have a conventional clutch to enable us to select our high, medium and low speed range in our transmission. But other than that, we can basically leave that alone because to the left of the steering column, is a small orange lever, which is my shuttle shift system. If I push it forward, when the tractor's in the selected gear, it will move forwards. If I pull it back to neutral, the tractor will stop. I pull it backwards and the tractor will go in reverse. So I do not need to touch the clutch at all, making it very, very useful for loader work, etc. in those particularly arduous conditions of going backwards and forwards, which many years ago meant clutching and declutching all the time and moving a gear lever. To my right, I actually have a control which gives me my eight forward speeds that I require. Now again, rather than fighting through a transmission gate, a gentle push forward and I'll be in speed number one, two, three, four, and so on, right through to number eight. So this makes for extremely easy driving for the operator. Now the fact the transmission is mechanical in its background, it does mean of course that enabling to it to select a gear, whether it be in high, medium or low range, does give me a consistent speed at a particular engine RPM that I choose. So if I wanted to do three miles an hour with an aerator on the back, and it meant that the engine was running at 2000 RPM, and in second gear, I would keep that consistent speed, that's what I'd need for aeration, and that's quite often where the mechanical transmission comes into its own. Traditionally, of course, all tractors have had a PTO, power takeoff system, to drive implements at the rear. For many years, this was a dual stage clutch system, which meant that once one had selected the speed that you wanted, i.e. either 540 or perhaps 1000, as you let your foot off the clutch pedal, so one clutch would engage and start the PTO driving, then the second clutch would cut in to make the tractor move. They were very good, but of course, if you were stopping and turning and shunting around, every time you dipped your foot on the clutch, the PTO would stop, and sometimes you had to disengage. Many modern day tractors have done away with those systems. Whilst we still mechanically select the speed that we require, we now sometimes just turn a button inside the tractor cab and the PTO starts rotating. We press the button down and the PTO stops. Very, very simple. And this is done through a hydraulic clutch pack as opposed to a mechanical clutch as used to be on tractors many years ago. Now, we have other systems within here. Again, removing the levers from the operating area of the driver. We have controls here such as two and four wheel drive. So a turn of a switch and I've gone from a two wheel drive tractor to a four wheel drive. Bearing in mind that these tractors are often used in our industry in turf maintenance and we are perhaps aerating or we're dragging something behind, there is another switch in here which when engaged, linked to the shuttle shift transmission means that when I reverse, the three point linkage will lift the implement automatically which again saves the operator thinking about what he has to do. He turns round, he lines himself up again, hits the lever, and the implement just goes down and re-engages in the ground. A very, very simple, easy to use system. We've now moved from a hydraulic shuttle shift tractor which, with mechanical transmission to one which has full hydrostatic transmission. Nothing new, hydrostatic transmission tractors have been around for many, many years, and were certainly very useful when it comes to cutting grass and doing a lot of shunting and maneuvering because of course we could just move a pedal one way or the other, we go forwards in one direction, reverse in the other. And very, very easy to use, particularly when cutting grass. However, they were never really much good for 
grounds maintenance when it came to ground engaging implements such as aerators that are being driven by the PTO because we needed to keep consistent speed for those operations which of course a mechanical tractor always gave us. Whilst this tractor is hydrostatic drive and it has three speed ranges it also has a transmission that's linked to the pedal which drives the tractor also increases the engine speed. So as we go to drive away so the engine speed increases and the further we push the pedal down the faster the tractor goes in conjunction with the engine speed. This is particularly good for driving the tractor around from A to B and doing just general duties. However we can also control that operational speed extremely well by a system of buttons that I have here. Now for example say I was doing a ground engaging implement job and I have a nominal operating speed that I require I would, as we always do, set the engine speed to give me the ground speed I require and then I would flick on the cruise control. Once I flick the cruise control on the tractor remembers that speed. When I come to the end of the run I could lift the implement, I apply my foot to the accelerator pedal even further, the tractor goes faster, I turn round, I come back, I engage the cruise control button again and then I press this button which says resume and it will automatically bring me back to my speed that I had in the first place ensuring that if I was aerating I'd be going back across the green or the turf surface at the same speed again. I'm not trying to judge it or guess it, it's all pre-programmed and memorized in the system. Now hydrostatic drive tractors are of course extremely easy for those staff that you may employ that perhaps cannot control a mechanical transmission very easily. The fact that you can start the tractor up, select a speed range and the tractor sits there and then by applying pressure to the pedal you actually increase the engine speed and the tractor moves is very very easy for a novice or inexperienced driver. Taking their foot off the pedal the tractor stops. This one still has a shuttle transmission because we still need to select our forward drive, our neutral, our reverse drive as we saw on the previous tractor. But very very simple driving for inexperienced staff. So we've had a look at transmissions on tractors. We have the shuttle shift transmission, mechanical on this tractor here. We have a shuttle shift on this one but hydrostatic drive. Both have their respective uh, strengths for aeration purposes, grass cutting purposes and many other applications. So nothing stands still, there's always progression but there's a multitude of choices and you need to really look at what you require and what suits a particular application for the needs of your grounds maintenance practices and programs. Thank you.